The echoes of my first encounter with the imposing figure of Mr. Anderson still resonated as I embarked on the second week within the hallowed halls of Belandra. The challenge presented by Alice, though met with reluctant acknowledgement, was merely a prelude to the orchestrated symphony that Mr. Anderson had composed for my initiation. The morning sunlight streamed into the boardroom, casting a sharp contrast to the polished darkness of the mahogany table. As I took my seat, the anticipation was palpable. Mr. Anderson, an arbiter of corporate power, surveyed me with a gaze that seemed to not only dissect my proposals, but ruthlessly scrutinize the very core of my existence within Belandra. The atmosphere, though seemingly calm, crackled with an underlying tension. I presented the meticulously crafted financial report, hoping to navigate the delicate balance between precision and the unpredictable expectations of Mr. Anderson. His eyes, a mirror of authoritarian condescension, scrutinized every detail. Well, well, Alex, he sneered, a cold smirk playing on his lips. Your ability to navigate numbers is tolerable, but can you handle real-time challenges? With those words, the orchestration of my challenges commenced. Each meeting became a battleground where my ideas were not dissected with surgical precision, but brutally attacked to expose any perceived vulnerability. Anderson's questions were not inquiries for knowledge, but strategic strikes aimed at unraveling my composure. The hum of the corporate machinery became a dissonant melody, and I found myself forced to dance to Mr. Anderson's malicious tune. Assignments flowed like a relentless stream, each task more soul-crushing than the last. It wasn't about the tasks themselves, it was a psychological torment, a game of power and submission played out in the heartless arena of corporate cruelty. The weeks unfolded, a tapestry of torment meticulously woven by Mr. Anderson. Rule 4, the label of mediocre, had become a recurring motif. The eyes of my colleagues, once filled with curiosity, now held a mixture of pity and relief that they weren't in my position. I questioned whether this was the norm within Belandra, a sadistic rite of passage reserved for those who dared to aspire. The web of self-doubt, woven during the first encounter, now tightened its suffocating grip. Mr. Anderson's taunts and relentless assaults were calculated to break not just my professional responses, but the very essence of my being within the heartless corporate structure. The corporate serenade had evolved into a symphony of suffering. With each heartless challenge, I felt the weight of unrelenting expectation and the callous demand for compliance. It was a cruel battle waged not just in the boardroom, but within the cold recesses of my own battered psyche. Little did I realize this was not just a series of challenges. It was a sadistic effort by Mr. Anderson to mold me into a shattered note in his heartless corporate composition. Amidst the torment, a paradox emerged within me. The more Mr. Anderson berated me, the more I found myself drawn to him. His condescending tone, his relentless demands, they stirred something inexplicable. It was a toxic allure, a magnetic pull that defied reason. I questioned my own sanity as I acknowledged a growing attraction, an uncharted territory of desire that went beyond the confines of logic. In the silence of my solitary reflections, I grappled with the conflicting emotions that Mr. Anderson's presence ignited. Why did his cruelty awaken a desire to please him? Why did the harshness of his words become a strange source of fascination? The answers eluded me, trapped in the labyrinth of my tangled emotions. As the weeks unfolded, I found myself entangled in a web of contradictions. The more he pushed me to the edge, the closer I teetered towards surrender. It was as if his dominance held a peculiar charm, a masochistic allure that I couldn't resist. The lines between pain and pleasure blurred, and I stood at the precipice of a revelation, an acknowledgement of a desire that defied societal norms. Yet in the midst of this internal chaos, one truth remained undeniable. I couldn't, and perhaps didn't want to, escape the gravitational pull of Mr. Anderson. The torment became a twisted dance, each step drawing me deeper into the intricate steps of submission. I questioned my own motives, my sanity, but in the end, the unspoken allure of Mr. Anderson prevailed. I stood on the brink, uncertain of the destination, but strangely willing to surrender to the enigmatic force that bound us.